Copy, you shoot boss. I got radio check. Yeah, radio is working fine. Yeah, copy all personnel. Yeah, copy, mate. The city in the Vimper Yeah, stitch her up then. Thanks, mate. Welcome, Tommy. We've had a bloody, I've had a keg failure. I can't believe it. <laughs> you almost lost me for a minute. Oh, I know. And you've missed the Entec barbecue because of it. And I'm, uh, I'm very sorry about that. But okay. dude, can't, you can't get a better option than coming in to um, talk as much as you want about geotech and ground support. Like that's, um, that's heaven. Captive it? audience. And uh, you signed up for it. And you got the, um, <laughs> cheers, bro. <laughs> and you've even bought the Nando shirt, the scale one in. I have. Uh, it's probably one of my favourite go-to shirts in the wardrobe at the moment. Yep. Yep. Kids um, wouldn't know what it means, as you said. They did ask. <laughs> What's scaling, Dad? But um, it's such an important aspect of our job and uh, it's a bit of a lost art, I think. And there'd be a scaling bar at the entrance to every level. Um, and it's something you'd even have to do in your induction as you your underground component when i first started as a still grad. do yeah still they're still doing it yeah yep. some do some don't <laughs> oh really yeah yep. but it's um you know making sure we secure the ground and create a safe work environment is really paramount mm. yes well we've got a we've got a bit to get through today because i wanted to i thought rather than uh just doing a i guess a holistic geotech yarn i thought we could uh focus in on the ground support from yeah the tech perspective, my perspective, and all bits in the middle, because uh, we do a pretty good job of jamming them in and bending them, and uh, <laughs> it's all about uh, sometimes quantity, not quality. And it'd be yep. good to hear, um, hear your side of it. Now, you always hear about back in the you know eighties, yada yada. Just used to spot bolt. Still places in a lot of our minds now that we walk through that have just been spot bolted. Because that was yeah. the standard, the requirement back then. When did it all change to evolve into what it is today of surface support, bolting, everything? Well, yeah, I think um, with the onset of mechanisation, bigger, more powerful gear and creating bigger tunnels um, started to lead to some issues. And I guess the onset of stress and seismicity at depth as well. But... Um, yeah, I guess you do see a lot of legacy mines with, you know, the first couple of hundred metres of uh, of the declines are just spot bolted and there's no surface support. And that was perfectly acceptable back then. Um, we make allowances with those historical mines by, you know, regular check scaling and inspections so we don't have to go back and mesh them. But yeah, certainly in the old days, I think the old timers just treated the ground a lot better. They were perhaps using smaller drill stills and they just took care of the ground more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because they didn't have mesh, they had to make sure they sounded the ground and, and put the bolts in the right spot. Um, but, yeah, as, you know, cost and speed and mechanisation has become more of an important factor and then we've had to um, allow for more support and reinforcement in those tunnels just to make them safe. Yeah. And when, when did that legislation get brought in exactly? We've got a, uh, you've gone to a bloody good effort here to, <laughs> we've got a bit of a PowerPoint, Preza. Yeah, um, so a few, a few of the key ones, 1997, Department of Mines um, introduced 10.28, geotechnical considerations for underground mines. 97, did you say? Yeah, yep. and then in 99, Moshab introduced um surface rock support for underground mines so that was i guess because of the culmination of a lot of fatalities in industry um here in wa a lot of people were getting killed or injured in rock falls and department of mines said we need to do something about it so they provided these guidelines and legislation that we now still adhere to <clears throat> um so i guess you should just flick back a slide or two yeah 10.28 is all about the geotechnical considerations and what needs to be considered and who's responsible. And then um, the MOSHAP guidelines in 99 basically said you have to put surface support everywhere in underground mines to within 3.5 metres of the floor. 
Yep. And that 3.5 meters was selected because I guess they felt at the time you could still reach a height of 3.5 meters with a scaling bar to remove uh, loose rocks and that kind of stuff. So, and that's still what applies today because ours it supports 3.5. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean that the surface support was a guideline, and that's why I guess we can still readily use some of these older declines established in the mid 90s that have no surface support. Um, so, it's very difficult not to develop a mine without surface support these days. But I guess there's some um, allowances or accepts, acceptances, exceptions for the older mines that are still going today, um, but don't have surface support like mesh. Yeah, and no, it's function to drive with, isn't it, mainly now? Because um, I know some mines, the single burn mines that are, I think it was two and a half metres wide, if they kept it to two and a half metres wide, they could not put in surface support. It was just spot bolted with an air leg, I think. So, um, Yeah, and it's probably the height as well yep. it's less than that 3.5 meters and it's yep. smaller gear yep. and it can be reached from the ground with a scaling bar yep. then those exceptions apply yep. uh certainly but i know you'd be hard pressed to find mines without that surface support these days and because we're so used to it like personally if i feel a little bit uncomfortable going somewhere where there's no mesh mm. um, but that was all and it was that was just normal and we're the same because I've only ever worked in places with surface support. And if you, yeah, if you walk, <laughs> if you're walking under something, that was just normal back then. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of indoctrinated these days on mine sites. You don't go under unsupported ground. Yeah. And that's normally your last row of bolts, um, completely installed bolts. Beyond that is unsupported ground. And that's a big no no. We don't go out there those these days, like freshly blasted ground, et cetera. Mm. So I want to get into the bolts and the surface support. So yeah. different types of bolts, different types of surface support, what they all do, pros, yep. cons, yada, yada, yada. How about we start with the bloody bolt that I've, I've bent about bloody 6,000s of these fucking things. <laughs> Split sets. That will be the most commonly used seen bolt that everyone is aware of. Yeah. Um, and we've got we've got we've got pretty pictures and everything to come with this, courtesy of the bloody uh courtesy of our great sponsors at NTech Mining. <laughs> uh look a little piece of folded up bloody steel to the naked eye. How does it work? What do they do? Why are they so commonly used, popular? Well, I guess we've fallen in love with them because they're fast and easy to install. And they're cheap. They're probably the cheapest bolt out there. What's two point four splitty cost? Do you know? Oh, it's less than twenty bucks. Yeah. Um, that's just the material. A lot of bloody 20 buck notes I'll leave on the fucking front of the, <laughs> out lucky, the front lucky sometimes. The, lucky they don't deduct it from your payroll. Oh, good. Yeah, no, I usually hide them under the jumbo if they're rocking up. They can't yeah. see them there, so I drive off and they appear. Yeah, yeah. and I guess um, the beauty of the split set is once you've drilled the hole and you've installed it, it's set up and it's already working. So that installation process is really important because it sets up the radial pressure that the split set exerts on the borehole. So it's very sensitive to the size of the hole we drill, too big and we won't get enough, we won't develop enough radial pressure and friction, too small and it's gonna to be too hard to push in. So, and we set that radial force up by forcing a bigger, big bolt into a small hole and it starts to close the split. So it's a, it starts out as a flat bit of steel and we roll it and we leave a split open and as we force it into a hole, that split starts to close. And in return, it's like a, a radial force or a spring pushing back out against the walls of the hole. And that's how it transfers load into the rock mass. Yep. So um, they're cheap, fast. They're pretty hard to stuff up, although we still do a pretty good job of stuffing it up sometimes. Mm. And, you know, in Australia, we're in love with them because um it's just been readily available and widely adopted and it's easy to install with a jumbo yep they now applications in different type of ground for a split set um is there what types of ground do they not work in because I, I i would assume a lot of it is they're probably in good ground they're not really doing too much at all they're just they're there because 
the bloody mines department says you have to put mesh and splitties up to cover the ground. That's what they're mostly yeah. doing. Well, look, and I've heard them referred to as a glorified mesh hanger. Yeah, and <laughs> that's that's what they're, they're um, yeah, money making machines for jumbo ops usually. Yeah, that's yeah. right. But is there what types of ground are they not really effective in? Um, probably like dense ground, so real heavy nickel sulfides and that type of thing. It, they don't quite have enough capacity. So the so the friction that is exerting is just overcome by the sheer weight. Weight of the rock, that's Dense, right. Density of the rock and it's too much for it. Yeah, yeah. and ground where we have um, quite deep um, potential wedges or failures, that's the kind of stuff, because we need to have a certain amount of bolt anchored beyond what we think might fall in. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I reckon you got a bloody picture of that somewhere, don't you? Yeah, something yeah. like that. Look at that. Picture right there. So, so you know, because you need the... Yeah, so you've got a couple of shit areas you need the bolt anchored on it on a good bit so that's it, right it's holding up the shit bits below yeah, yeah so it's only the length of the bolt beyond the wedge or the bit of unstable ground that's doing the work um and look to be honest a significant proportion of the support that we install might never see any load or do any work but these days because we don't want to have to worry about scaling and maintaining the drives we install support everywhere so we feel safe and it provides a safe travel way for the life of the excavation yeah um the hole diameter to talk about so we've what are we 42 and a half to 43 and a half sorry 41 and a half to 43 and a half for a 2.4 splitty yeah you see the difference from from our perspective in the installation obviously 1.8 fucking easy to jamming compared to a 2.4 yeah very a lot easier seen so some places when you then move to install and the three meter split sets or any three meter bolt for that matter using the same bit size as that 2.4 it's just that 600 mil extra of bolt significantly different in installing that bolt like if you're yeah. boom angle to hole angles a little bit off and and everything it really has a you start bloody deforming the bolt and they don't fucking yeah. go the whole way. That's right. Um, so the longer the hole, the more friction you have to overcome to drive it all the way home. So, and yeah, definitely bit size. And what's important is correctly sizing your bits for the mine you're working. Some mines have soft ground and um, the, the bit and the, drill steel might tend to flog the hole out of a bit and make it a bit oversized. So you might have to use a bit towards the smaller end of the 43 to 45 mil gauge range. So when we first start developing new mines and even on an ongoing basis, it's, it's important we make sure that the bit size is always suitable for the rock we're developing in. Yeah. Um, and a good telltale used to be how long does it take you to drive a splitty in a 2.4 splitty we used to say kind of 10 to 15 seconds but mm. you know jumbos have got so much power in those booms these days like they zip them right in and that's not always the best um, gauge but yeah hole size is one of the critical elements also not not overdriving the split set um as in like deforming mm. the plate yeah. yeah when it's been rammed home and just keeping that hammer on for an extra few seconds that can damage the ring. Yep. Um, something we were chatting about before was, you know, rotation. It sounds simple, but we can't use rotation as we install split sets because that will torque the bolt, twist it, and it deforms it. So it actually won't have the same um, load capabilities. It won't hold its greater load because if you give it a bit of a twist, less steel is in contact with the wall rock in that hole and it's not going to develop the same oh, is that, yeah that's so that's why it's because uh, you notice after like you fire a strip and or whatever and you look at the bolts when you're chiseling them off and they're all oh look they wouldn't have been mine that i was using rotation no, on it, putting them it's in night shift man. yeah bloody <laughs> must have been night shift but um yeah you see them all and they're all that yeah. that way yeah, yeah so that that, de that definitely affects how the bolt behaves and performs yeah um but i guess a trap we fall in with splitties too because they're cheap fast everyone knows how to use them is we have lots of these mines that start with three to five years development or three to five years mining mine life but we're still there 15 20 years later 
So the, I guess the serviceability or the life expectancy of a split set is not as great as say a resin grouted rebar. So we start to have these legacy issues of lots of mines, split sets everywhere that were installed 10 or 15 years ago and we mm. start questioning the integrity of those and we have to monitor them. Is that because of corrosion mainly or yeah. fatiguing of the steel? Or what's the main things Look, that in, cause the lifespan issues of forum? Yeah, it's corrosion. So, and it's atmospheric and it's also just, you know, water passing through. So split sets can be made to last a bit longer. Like we mostly use galvanized split sets these days. In the old days when I was a grad, lots of black splitties were used. Um, but yeah, they just don't have the same life expectancy because they're exposed to the elements. Yep. Yeah. So moving on to, I guess, the more expensive end, because every, everyone, I'm, I'm sure if everyone wanted, had their choice, they'd just use split sets everywhere. Quick, easy install, cheap, light to carry, like from operators to everyone, it's just they're the, they're the flavor. Yep. Um, from the geotechnical side of things, because your department is who pretty much dictates what bolts are used on a mine site. Yep. Most, most of the time, well, I would assume. <laughs> what, where, what's the next steps beyond using split sets? Where, where do you start? What's the process and how do you, how do you pick which bolt? Um, look, it comes down to how long is this excavation or tunnel going to be used for? If it's six months, 12 months, <clears throat> and then it's going to be blasted, bog fired, never seen again, then we use a split set. If it's capital development, like your decline, your accesses, and it's going to be around for years and years, we would definitely advocate using a longer life bolt, such as a resin grouter bolt. Because they're encapsulated in resin, they're going to last many more years. So, so, that, so, that, so encapsulating it in the glue um, yeah. is, makes it corrosion resistant. resistant definitely. Yep. Yep. And being uh, a solid bolt, it's got less surface area um, than a splitty, so it's less prone to... I guess, um, corrosion. Yep. And it also depends on the ground conditions. Sometimes we just need a higher capacity bolt. So a typical splitty, we normally work off on 10 tons pull out, maybe 12 for a 2.4 meter, 47 mil splitty. <clears throat> so that's that's saying when you pull test it, you load it up with 10 ton pulling it down and it should hold. Yeah, it should hold. Yeah. That's right. Um, rebar, depending on the, the diameter, you know, 19, 20 or 25 mil, they're between 20 to 30 tons capacity. And I guess the beauty of the rebar, because it's coupled with resin and that's interlocked with the rock, um, it's a much more, uh, I guess, better interlocking with the rock mass and better what we call load transfer mechanism because it's embedded in resin and the resin's, you know, molded to the shape of the whole of the rock. We get really good transfer of the load to the rock mass so you're going to realize that 18 or 20 to 25 30 tons capacity of the bolt <clears throat> so sometimes we just need high capacity bolts what so the the glue the, yep. re, the glue it, does it for the gooey bolts what is the primary function of it well it sounds like there's multiple functions of it is one yep. of it actually does that actually have an effect on the like supporting the rock mass, the glue. It's not just to hold the bolt in place. Well, it's primarily to transfer the load from the bolt to the rock yep. and also encapsulate the bolt and give it corrosion protection. Yep. So these bolts can also be sensitive to drill hole size. So if the holes are too big, we're going to use too much resin and resin's expensive. And it'll bloody fall out every time you try to put the fucking thing in. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Just and, rain and glue everywhere. And uh, they're just and they're finicky too, right? Trying to yeah. insert a resin insertion tube up a hole with you know resin cartridges in it. It's like it's not fun. Nah. Oh, and, <laughs> and that hole don't like it's um yeah, she's a fine line. Like, mm. you know, too I haven't put one in for a while, but too skinny, it won't go up, but then and it'll bugger the hat. And then, but too big, the hat won't stay, especially shit ground where when you were saying before, you might be using yeah. a small bit, but it all blows out and it won't hold. Yeah, that's um, right. Oh, then the the softness of the resin, the storage and like, oh. Yeah, it, they're really sensitive to storage. It's got to be cool and dry. They can't be sitting out in the heat because yeah. they'll just go off. Um, and it's also important that 
the operator mixes the resin properly as he rotates and spins it in. Um, Once you get it to stay up there, that's the next step. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's always a tricky bit, making sure. What, what is what is the recommendations there? I've heard plenty of different ones. You read the box, then you hear some people, uh, suppliers say something. What What is your spin, like spin time for the, because uh, you've got your slow, medium, your medium, fast, yeah, different setting times. What's the what's the bloody geotech recommendation? Oh, just whatever the manufacturer says. Uh, no, yeah, mate, that's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like normally they'll use like a a slow, uh, a fast and a slow, or a fast and a medium set yeah. in the same hole. <clears throat> um, spin it up for oh, I think it's like thirty to fifty seconds, and then hold it at the back of the hole for at least ten or fifteen to go off, and then you should be able to crack the nut. Yeah, but you know, the guys, um, the suppliers, the ones will come and they'll come and do a bit of training with the jumbo ops and like they deal with this stuff all day and it just depends on the resins that you've selected as well. Yeah. God, I had one bloody supplier come say to me. He says, yeah, just spin it up, get it up there as quick as you can, leave it and come back to it, tighten it up. It's yeah. that, that's it. You get told so many different things. Yeah. It's Jeez, I don't know if I'll be spinning it for 50 seconds. I'll get a bit <laughs> bloody out. The knees will be knocking a bit by the yeah. end of that. Well, and it's just... Um, and it's just important to spin as you insert, yep. not just shove it to the back of the hole and then rotate because you won't get very good mixing then. So is that so? Uh, if you do do that, it doesn't. Um, that mixing doesn't bind it to the full annulus yeah. of the hole. Yeah, and it's just it? important that um, these bolts they've got a mixing a mechanism, and you've got to shred the plastic on the the resin cartridges. Otherwise, you can get what we call gloving. the The bolt gets wrapped in the plastic. And you won't get very good transfer of the load to the rock mass. So you yeah. can pull out or you won't be able to talk them up. Yep. Um, that kind of stuff. So, yep. yeah. Uh, now, a split set works on what? Outwards friction. Yep. Radial bulk, pressure. Yeah. Radial, radial pressure. Yeah, buddy. You're there. That, I'll stick with that. <laughs> radial new, pressure. It's a new lingo. That works with radial pressure. That's stiffening up the ground. How does a, how does a gooey bolt work if there's no radial pressure? Or is there radial pressure? How is a no. gooey bolt supporting the ground? Or is it supporting it in the event of the ground moving? Yeah, in the event. So it's not really setting up um, any forces during installation. Whereas a split set, you're setting up that radial pressure. <clears throat> um, what the rebar does is the resin interlocks with the rebar. And then in turn, the resin is interlocked with the, um, the hole that you've drilled and it requires on that good bond between the bolt the resin and the rock mm. to allow transfer of the load so as the bolt comes on the load it it's trying to get pulled out of the hole and it then sheds that load to the rock mass through i guess the interlocking mechanism and what is the difference between when you've got the full length of the bolt uh resin and you've got the we were using on our we were using the debonded bolts so they yeah. had the yellow sleeve at the it was halfway so yeah it was a half half the yeah, middle half of the bolt and, so the tail and yeah. the bottom were only encapsulated what's the theory behind that so that just allows the bolt to stretch the section that's been debonded is allowed to stretch and that helps us dissipate energy or slow down squeezing ground. So in the event of deep or high stress conditions or seismically active conditions, the more or the length of the deep bonded bolt is proportional to basically how much energy it can dissipate. So we use those in dynamic conditions. Um, if we have a seismic condition and the rock mass moves and applies a loading to the plate, that steel will stretch and yep. dissipate the energy and try and you know minimize or um, reduce the likelihood of like rock flying into the drive yep. like a rock burst so that's the idea behind the debonding of the bolts by debonding it you allow it to stretch and that dissipates energy so it's got more chance of staying together in a big seismic event than if you had the whole thing yeah resined yep. if it's yeah all resined it's it's just too stiff it'll snap yeah if you've got it debonded it's going to allow it to stretch yep. yeah now the plate the plate for gooey bolts yeah and split sets are they fucking doing anything? What do they do? Well, they're very important um, because not only are we, I guess, trying to couple with the rock mass, but when the plate comes on the load, 
it's normally from the mesh and yep. that occurs through the plate so it's important that we we don't mismatch elements of the support scheme you don't want to have a plate too soft that mesh will just pull over the top and conversely you don't want a plate um, that's too strong and it just pulls and rips through the mesh so the, the plate just helps um, when load comes out onto the mesh it'll transfer to the plate and allow the bolt to do more work yeah so it's really important especially in dynamic conditions um, or seismically active mines when we have strain bursting the i guess the interaction between the surface support the mesh and the fibercrete in transferring load or energy to the bolt is key mm. so we've got to make sure the system's all working together so if you've already deformed that plate too much while you're install installing it you're oh. you're buggering up the effectiveness in the event of ground movement because it's right. already deformed yeah yeah and you know whenever we have these falls of grounds due to just gravitational loading or seismic events yeah they'll always exploit the weakest part of the system and that'll be something that hasn't been installed correctly or a mesh overlap or something like that so we've got to make sure the whole system's working together yep now moving on from the gooey bolt great great fucking rundown on a gooey bolt oh, hope, I'm not, hope uh, I'm not just talking too much no nah, nah, it's it's uh, i'll just it'll be good people that have got that are getting glue rained on them every day and crack pipes bloody <laughs> splitting and everything it's just like it is for a purpose it is it, yeah. it is it is for a purpose and probably we don't communicate it well enough yeah um, just yeah. pat on the back for everyone that's having a crack <laughs> down there um the next although i suppose the new the big game changer from uh, your yeah, heavily heavily resined mine support systems, the MDX bolt, the Kinlock, whatever you want to call it, we've I've, I've had them as I'm sure it's all just branding. One one place yeah. I called hybrids. The other one was a Kinlock. The other one was a MDX MD. All different brands, but the same the same bolt. Which yeah. Oh, so they best, best way to explain the bloody split uh, a split set with a radio bar inside of it and a bloody and an a eye bolt bloody wedge on the end yeah uh, wedge and anchor. it's got everything going on fucking heavy yeah that's right and especially the three meter ones far out yeah <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah yeah remind me to talk about ask about bit size about these as well um but yeah what's the the theory behind the bloody supreme pizza bolt you'd say it's that, pretty fully loaded yeah. yeah it's got everything happening um so when they all come in bloody what are uh, your thoughts on them for the last five or six years Probably one of the more popular ones in the market is the MD and the MDX bolt made by Sandvik. And I guess um, they advertise it as being um, like, a, it's like a high capacity split set, if you will. It's yeah. been souped up by sticking a, a rebar inside. Hmm. So it is a high capacity bolt and it allows you to insert a high capacity bolt into broken ground. So Obviously, trying to get a resin graded rebar into broken ha a broken ground is hard sometimes. So, um, by marrying the rebar and the splitty together, it's, it's a bit of a hybrid. Um, and the point anchor, I guess, will create or set up a that, that a larger radial pressure by kind of toe anchoring that solid bolt. And basically, it's it's just a high capacity bolt. They're kind of good for um, twenty to twenty five tons. And I guess it's advertised as being able to be used in dynamic or seismic conditions as well. And it's fast, yeah. right? Yeah, well, it's, yeah, yeah, so much Expensive, faster. expensive. Mm. Yeah, what's, what's the cost of, um, off the top of your head, like oh, the, the uh, MD, MDXs compared to, say, splitties and goods? Like, they're significant oh, increase. Yeah, five or that? six times more. Five or six times, yeah. Yeah, they're pretty pricey. Yeah. Um, don't quote me on the pricing, but they're mm. significantly more expensive. Because they're um, and you can bend them a lot easier. Because you, um, oh, the MDXs were good because they actually had the nut back inside of the splitty, whereas the ones we used the nut was on the sort of the outside, so you could easily damage it trying to insert it, and then it's effectively yeah. good for fuck all. Yeah, that's um, it. So how are they working? So that Rio bar is it in? Is the only addition to the radial pressure coming from the at the, the point anchor? Yeah, because so down the bottom shouldn't be that radial bar is not having any effect on the radial pressure down the bottom, is it? 
because it's just still the splitty is the riding oh, pressure. Yeah, or, obviously that's at the back end of the hole, the yeah. the the wedge, um, and yeah, basically you shouldn't be able to pull that bolt out. It'll, it'll it won't slip anymore like a traditional splits that would normally slip when it comes under load. But because of as that, in so when you put more than the ten ton or whatever, it's it'll start it's hard to it all start. Over. Yeah, yeah. So the and that's because the because of the wedge at the end that's given it that extra that extra oomph. Yeah, extra slip. Yeah, yeah. Because you've torqued that nut up at the collar, and that's expanded the shell down the hole, and yeah. it's created like a strong point anchor inside the split set. So you'd be hard pressed to pull it out of the hole. So it's really the action of the steel bar inside and the the strength of that bar yeah and is there and does it perform better in the seismic ground that rio bar is essential for the site for the movement and creating the Look, stiffness or how how does it how does it perform does it perform better than a gooey bar um or is the jury the, out on that i'd say the jury's out my yeah. uh, i guess my opinion is um, probably the better bolts performing in dynamic conditions is like a debonded rebar or a debonded yep. posimix. Um, there's a lot of um, data and papers out there testing all different kinds of bolts. So the MDX definitely has its place, but there's probably some questions around that wedge mechanism when it comes under a sudden um, dynamic load or you know different different people have different opinions my personal preference would be to use a a debonded posimix bolt mm. uh in dynamic conditions but sometimes you can't get those installed because the ground's a bit busted up and munted so we would go to an mdx yeah because you can it's easier to put a splitty inside a hole with broken ground than it is to try and shove resin up there I've um, heard over east though, because they were using swell X's over there. We'll get we can get into them as well, but because that when they were using the MDX, the hybrid bolts, it was real shearing ground over there. So it had actually it had actually shear the Rio bar and shoot the whole thing out the bloody bolt like a bloody gun. <laughs> um, and yeah. so they had to they had to use swell X bolts for that reason. So they they couldn't actually use. Yeah, and the X's. That's that's what. Yeah, the uh, geotech told me that. Um, yeah, look in ground where you do have some kind of shear component, a lot of bolts will struggle. Even resin grouted bolts. Like I've seen mines where they go around and cable tie the bolt head and the plate to the mesh. Yeah. Because it becomes a projectile when that. That's what. Yeah, that's what was bolt, happening. Yeah, bolt loads up and snaps. It can shoot off into the drive. So, um, swell X are good too. But they, they have their place. They just haven't been widely adopted in Australia, I guess, due to early on bad pu bad publicity yeah. um, and some failures. Was, uh, it, was it a lot of the failure with the mechanism to blow on the water into them? Or? Yeah, just incorrect inflation. So they weren't being inflated to the correct pressure. So you weren't getting a really good interlocking with the rock and corrosion. Yeah. So, uh, right, so give, give us a give us a spiel on the Swellex. What's a Swellex bolt for people that don't well, know? Well, it's it's a bloody weird looking bolt. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's got other names. Swellex is the original name. There's the Python bolt and other names with different manufacturers. But it's a sleeve of steel or tube of steel that's been folded in on itself, and it's crimped at each end. Um, we insert it into a hole, and then basically at the top in the collar. There's a small hole and we inflate the bolt with high water pressure up to like 200 bar or something. And you've got to hold it at that high pressure um, for a number of seconds to ensure that it's being correctly inf inflated. Yep. So it's kind of similar to a split set in that it's a friction bolt, but you get more interlocking happening with the rock mass because it inflates and molds to the shape of the hole. Um, so it's, it's pretty good in like weak broken ground. Um, they use it a lot in the States. I've seen it used lots mm. and they use it on um, kind of Boltec machines. They'll have a carousel full of these things and they can just keep drilling holes, shoving them in. But in Australia, we just prefer to use other bolts because, um, mm. you know, they're not cheap either. And it's... Oh, so they're pretty expensive as well, are they? Yeah. And then you've got to have, you know, the... The dollar, the mechanism. The mechanism. Store. You've got to have water pump 
gauges, training. Um, you know, you just can't beat the splitty. I suppose the water <laughs> pump would be handy for when you're boring. Because if you've got that, you've got shit load of water when you're boring, you can bore quicker. There's a pro, there's a pro to it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think it's actually separate oh, is to it? the system. Yeah, it's oh, only right. for you inflating the bolt because it only needs a couple of liters to pump up the bolt. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Of um, is can you use a lot like? Is the bit the bit size wouldn't be as important with the Swellex, would it? Because it's going to inflate to whatever bit size you use anyway. Yeah. Because if you've got shit ground that you can't get the bloody thing in, and you'd be mad not to use a, a like a boring size bit to get it in easier, and then yeah. it inflates anyway, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's less sensitive to bit size for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's still got a range of bit sizes that they'll recommend you use, but it's less sensitive, say, than the split set bolt. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, bit bit back onto the bit size. We are, and cause we cause we bolt our, our declines capitals with um stiffy bolts as well. Yeah. Um they're great fun. Another <laughs> another variation on the yeah, splitty. Because they're and they're are they essentially just giving more stiffness and they're just a high, higher rated because they've got bloody yeah. um more outward radial pressure when you're installing them? There's a, a couple of reasons. Firstly, I guess so. Stiffy bolts are splitty with bloody grout inside it. Yeah, grout sausages. Yeah, yeah, and um, I guess firstly it gives us a bit of corrosion protection because it's filling up the whole of the split set with grout sausages, so it means that water can't drip through it and oh, okay, and yeah. moisture and air can't go inside as well. So that's one aspect, but it is called the stiff split set because it does stiffen the bolt. So if we put cement inside it and it goes off it can't deform inwardly anymore and i guess um probably what people don't realize is a split set bolt we normally work on a 2.4 meter split set slipping at 10 to 12 tons load it'll pull out of the hole but the inherent capacity of that steel is around 16 or 17 tons if you were to test a, a section of that tube and pulled it till it snapped it'll go to around 16 or 17 tons so by stiffening the bolt it allows us to realize more of that uh strength within the steel we don't account for it in our i guess design process we don't suddenly change the stiff split set from a a 10 ton to a 16 ton bolt we still use a lower end of the calculation but yeah it yeah it just stiffens up the, the system really because you know it's a big difference we've just actually been given some bits that are a 44 i think um so which yep. are to be used with a um, stiffy bolt yeah um then you, then you go to your mdx's and then or and especially if we're, we're using three meter mdx's at um golden grove and they like at the start it was saying you still had to use a 43 and a half mil bit to install them yeah right like and it was just oh some places you could get them in but other joints it was just even if you felt you had your your whole angle spot on you get to that last half a meter and it'd start deforming and <laughs> i would assume like if it starts before deforming the bolt's not really doing its job or is it um, doing some of the job or it's, yeah it's just definitely you it's being compromised. Yeah. Um, I guess with the MDX, though, you still got that steel rod or rebar inside that's going to be doing the majority of the work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it's always important to try and correctly size the bit for the rock mass conditions and and the bolt you're installing. So the G, the ground support standards would you would you advise to um take into account different bit sizes for different lengths of bolts and and the type. They actually ended yeah. up changing it that you could use uh, 43 and a half to a 45 and a half bit to install the three meter MDXs. Yeah. And it was good. They just went in so much easier. They just went in like a splitty, tightened them up perfect. Like, and it was, there and was no deformation or anything. And yeah, and that's, it was easier for us. But And that's the feedback we're looking for. Um, yeah. Because you, you know, Jumbo Ops, you're the guys that are installing it, right? And the manufacturer says this is. The range of the bit sizes we we've got to make sure we're not stuffing the bolt trying to install it but we've got to make sure it's installed so it's going to do the job it's intended to do so it's always good that you know have that feedback if it's not going in as you would expect it to chat to your g tech yeah um no doubt they love to come down and have a yarn jump up on the jumbo with you and oh say, yeah hey, what's going hey, on? do you want to put this one in yeah, yeah. Get them <laughs> on your side. You got to yeah. You got to manipulate them. Yeah. Because what, right. what what ground what because 
Oh, I should, probably should know the answer to this, but some some places bolts go. The one bolt goes in easy with, and you go to another heading, and sometimes they just don't go in easy. Yeah, same bit size, same bolt, same everything. What what is causing that? It probably just comes down to the hardness of the rock you're drilling. Softer ground might tend to flog out the hole and make the hole a bit bigger, so your split is going to go in easier. Yeah, harder ground, real hard ground. Um, you know, the the hole size is going to be you know, just marginally bigger than the bit and, um, yeah, might just make it a bit harder to install. So generally, if it's the same bit size, it's probably coming down to the hardness of the ground and therefore the hole that it makes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, any other bolts that we haven't covered? Oh, there's bloody, there'd be some yeah, there's be lots. shitloads. Yeah, I guess, you know, in terms of developments, like mining contractors talk a lot about high-speed development and single pass bolting systems. Um, oh, the self-drillers. Yeah. Self-drilling and also um, resin injection systems are, you know, that's the kind of the next level where we don't have to worry about resin sausages anymore. We just have a system where we can inject resin up the hole um, that's already mixed and you get better kind of encapsulation of the bolt and you can torque it up straight away. So how does that work? So uh... well, normally it's, it's coupled with a bolt that's hollow and you'll drill a hole, you'll use something like an SDA, a self-drilling anchor. Um, they're like an R32 thread, continuously threaded, just like your jumbo. Yeah. It's got a sacrificial bit on the end. You just drill a bolt to the end of the hole. I'll move that back. <laughs> and, um, and basically your dolly will come off and then you'll have a, a resin um, injection hose that'll fit onto the end of the bolt. You've got a pump, like a resin pump, yeah. and you've got your part A, part B, two sacks of resin, and it'll squirt resin and mix it straight up through the inside of the hole. It'll come back out um, at the collar, and basically you've got full encapsulation, and then you can just tighten the bolt within ah, a short so of time. Ah, so it's but similar to the self-drilling, similar concept to the self-drilling split set. So you, you yeah. drill that sacrificial piece, yep. uh, leave it up there, and then, yeah, right. Just, just pump what, what rigs? Is that on like, the row boulders or is it on, can you do Jumbos. it with a normal twin boom jumbo? Yeah, like Gemma, I've done a lot of development to try and introduce it. It still has some, I guess, teething issues. Yeah. Um, but that's ultimately where mines want to get to. Um, and it's, you know, good like in um, when you're turning out a, an intersection or something, right? You normally got to stop, you got to drill holes, you got to install cables, you got to grout the cables tension them and you might lose you know two or three shifts or more waiting for that yep. um, we have cable bolts these days with the resin injection system so you can drill the holes install the install the cables inject the resin and you're turning it out you know the next shift um, you don't have to wait yeah right so no um so instead of using cement for the cable bolts they're using these resin things that's and right giving the same result yeah, or better. Jesus, a few bloody service crew blokes will be uh, fucking excited to hear about <laughs> not mixing grout and bloody blocking up holes and shit. Wonder if it does it, um, yeah, it'd probably stay up there a bit. There'd be less chance of it leaking than cement, wouldn't it? It'd be a yeah. bit more viscous. Yeah, it's more viscous and it'll, it goes off very quickly. Yeah. Like you can tension that plate within a matter of minutes of. Pump oh, geez, you're getting a few phone calls about that one, I reckon. They <laughs> feel like yeah, it's but it's cost though, right? So oh, okay, of course, of course, yeah. Of course. yeah. The but the yeah, the self-drilling splitty, I guess, is another one that's been floating around. Just like one pass splitty, so you don't have yeah. to drill a hole, pull your steel out, insert a splitty. You basically got a a drill steel, a narrow, small drill steel up the guts of the splitty with a sacrificial bit at the end. So it's, I think it's because it's pretty much a gooey steel, is it? And you're fighting you. We um yeah, you throw the bloody splitty over that and it's yeah. got a sacrificial bit and yeah, so it installs and drills at the same time. So I guess you're gonna get some small gains in speed. I wouldn't say they're significant, but um The the issue is load loading the bolts because you gotta you gotta get them get the boom right around and load it straight on. You can't feed it forward and there's definitely the, the, yeah, the yeah, that's issues, the, practical issues for the operator. Yeah. And for the for the geotech as well. Um, a good measure of the success of installing a splitty is like the drive time. But if you're drilling a hole and installing it at the same time, we, we don't 
we won't know until we come and pull test it at a later date how well that split has been installed. Like have you pull tested many of them? Do you know how much pull tests? Not me personally, yeah. but we've been involved with clients and they've done trials. Some other issues is just the the life of the sacrificial bit. Like they'll they'll get to half a meter from the end yeah. and the bit's flogged out and there's you know a foot of splits that's sticking out. So yeah, that can yep. be another issue as well. So yeah, you wouldn't want it in yeah brazy ground if it shit because I, I I would assume that sacrificial bit isn't the best quality. It's, cheap it's and just nasty. like just. Yeah. Fucking, we just needed to drill two point four meters. Yeah, <laughs> not a centimeter all. more. Yeah, that nah, that nah, that is that is yeah. Just keep it alive that long. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's but it's yeah, you get all these new technologies flash, and we all just still nothing's beaten the split the basic split set. Like there's that. It'd be funny to see if anything will um ever ever beat it. Really. Yeah, but I, it's it's whether a uh, um. We'll talk about surface support now before we finish up. Um, yeah, it's whether the light, the only thing you'd be able to do is have a surface support that negates the use of bolts at all. But yeah, whether, we're not there. No, nah, <laughs> no. Nah. Now, mesh shotcrete. Everyone, yeah. oh, fucking shotcrete. Can't see what it's behind it. Fuck the shotcrete. God, I've heard that bloody a million times. Um, but yeah, what's. Well, it definitely has a place. And yeah, oh, of it's course bloody, it- bloody good when it's. Fucking rain and bloody scats and shit everywhere on you trying to... Yeah. Yeah. So good in like really broken ground. So the heading doesn't become overscaled or um, kind of too large. It'll mm. hold that broken or friable ground in place so we can then bolt it. Um, and, you know, it, it, it does a good job. It does a lot of, I guess, the heavy lifting initially in holding small blocks and rocks in place. Um and coupled with bolts, you know, it, it just works well as a system in broken and fibre ground. And I guess, um, you know, early on, we thought using in cycle fibrocrete, we're going to speed up headings. It is more costly, um, but once you spray a heading, depending on the admixtures you use, you've got to wait between one and two hours before you can go and start uh, bolting through it. Whereas, you know, bolt mesh, you can, you can be in there straight away. So... Yeah, the time it takes to scale and pick up sheets of mesh and with no risk of a bloody spray mech breaking down in the bloody heading or not being available or an adgy break. Like there's yeah, it's two just, more bits of gear. Oh, it? so many more things that can bloody go wrong. And the heat. Yeah. A lot, lot hotter because of the cement. Fucks your pumps. It, but like it is yeah. bloody in the ground, in shit ground. Like you just, there's no nothing better than having it like just yeah. to as you say just to maintain that profile and just to get you in there yeah that's it yeah it does you know there's other applications too but it's it's a good product for sure in certain circumstances what what let's have a hypothetical that you are going through an absolute bloody dog shit piece of pus ground <laughs> section of pus ground that is just soft as anything would just if you hit it it just falls yeah um let's say you put 100 mil of shot crate floor to four, which would I assume creates like an anchored arch. Like that's, yep. Is there any point putting bloody bolts in it if it if the ground is that shit? Sometimes, like, it, can <laughs> bolts actually be um, more detrimental to the ground? Like, if it is, if the ground is that bad, is like that, that put is sometimes putting a shitload of shot crate the only answer, or is there oh. any point bolting it sometimes? Yes and no, I guess. Um the bolts are just going to still, even though like the ground might not be the best in behind, it's going to help secure that that liner, that fibercrete liner to the excavation. So I, yes, I still think you can't have one without the other, yep. um, for sure. But the fibercrete, the arch that's created will do the bulk of, I guess, the support in this case. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, if the ground's broken, the bolt's not doing too much, but it's going to keep that um, shell of fibercrete kind of locked in place a bit better. Yeah, yeah. What about paste? Um, yeah, love going it. Going back through paste, how good is it? Um, oh, pretty weird. Oh, I think we've only ever gone through, yeah, only ever, or it's always been fibercreted, gone underneath. I don't think I've been places where they've meshed it. But um, yeah, what's go putting bolts in paste? Do they even do anything, or it's more? There'd be more just mesh hanging devices, wouldn't they? Yeah, um, 
look, they do carry some load still. Look, bolts obviously go in a lot easier in uh, in paste. We tend to only use split sets in paste. Um, what some operators will do is just drill the first half meter and then just ram the mm. bolt the rest of the way in. Um, the fibercrete will be doing the bulk of the, I guess, the supporting, if you yep. will. Um, I've seen mines that will just mesh and bolt in paste. I've seen mines that will fibercrete and bolt. And I've seen mines that will fibercrete mesh and bolt. And it just depends on how long that development in paste has got to last for us. Like some mines just have to stub into the paste so they can drill the next stope. Others will actually create life of mine accesses back through paste filled stopes. So yeah. they weren't because they've taken a bloody end of four inch or year stope right in the guts <laughs> and then they've got to go back through it yeah. later on. That's all fucking seen that happen. Yeah. What what is there if you just fiber create it? What's the is that a is that an option? Like are you are you, are you uh, do you still need the bolts there? Like, is the theory that those bolts still take some load of the paste? Makes us feel better having some bolts, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably, I, mean, I suppose it's a tough one to get over the line, isn't it? Yeah. In a way. Yeah. yeah, look, I think the way the industry has evolved, it's hard not to use bolts anywhere. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, it, yeah. Look, uh, you probably could get away with it for sure with the proper scheme and proper in installation, but... The way I guess the industry industry has evolved, it's bolts everywhere. You won't get away from it. It's always mm. hard to wind back the yeah, amount of support. Yeah, we have yeah well, that's that's mining one hundred and one, isn't it? Just following rules that don't make sense sometimes, but you just got to follow. It. That's it. <laughs> follow the rules. Uh, now, I guess we'll talk about to finish off. You said you want to mention, uh, I guess, responsibilities of us, of all of us. Yeah, the jumbos, Geotex. Um, making sure that what's on the paper is executed yeah um oh no before i get into that i wanted to talk about this is what we see uh the ground support plan yeah the infamous ground support plan that we're like yeah yeah something like that <laughs> um standards you know 1.1 wide 1.4 spacing i've heard though mines were adopting tinkering with the steel length and the mesh size that they so running sheets long ways there's four rows of bolts per places that use a 4.3 steel and a four meter sheet run them forward and they use three rows of bolts so the rows get to 1.8 meter space instead of 1.4 so you less ground support what's go there what dictates that is that all from the uh department guideline or what what um where does that come in look as long as it can be justified to increase bolt spacing to 1.8 meters and a and as long as it's been designed and signed off by a, a geotechnical engineer then that's fine um 1.8 meters is you know just getting this it's a stretch that's a pretty wide spacing and obviously you know bolts do cost money and sometimes we do tend to over support headings because of the length of the cut we take or the length of the sheet of mesh we use. And look, we always want to optimize um, the length of the cut we take while taking into consideration the bolt spacing that's been recommended. Yep. So look, as long as it's been justified um, and it's documented and there's a, a traceable um, or a paper trail to show that yes, we can increase the spacing. I, I don't have a problem with that. And, but you, you'd have to, and you've got to have the ground to support it. You have to say we've got bloody, it's, it's very, very competent ground here. Yeah, um, it has to be analyzed, designed, change management. You know, we all like these catchphrases, yeah. but to make a change like that, we have a change management process in place on mine sites. What's the change we want to make? How are we going to do it? What are the, the effects? You can't just snap your fingers Oh, I want to use less bolts. Let's open up the pattern. Like that's we've got to follow a process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Everyone will be asking to um go one point eight meter bolts places <laughs> after hearing this. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Well, I guess the responsibilities of all of us. Um, that yeah, shitload of people involved in ground support. The yeah. Design the installation the QAQC. Um, what's your message to the bloody uh to the peeps, Tommy? Look, ev everybody has some responsibility um in the underground mine if you want to go just maybe to the finals 
it's fine. So I can just refresh what I said. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Oh, that one. I thought I was on it. Yeah. Um, anyone who goes underground has a responsibility to themselves and their co-workers. Um, the underground manager, he's got responsibility for everyone that goes underground. The geotechnical engineer, we have responsibility to ensure that ground support designs meet industry standards, uh, are safe, and they meet the expected conditions we have underground. And the operator, you big fella, we, we rely on you to execute the plan as we designed it because, um, you know, you're the, the last port of call. We, we rely on you installing that support because you're securing that ground for everybody else that's going to travel under there. Um, that's a big responsibility and that's why you get the Hollywood dollars, mate. Mm. Um, but like I said, everyone who goes underground has a responsibility to be aware of their surroundings. Um, some, you know, things change underground. You've got to make sure you look up, look at the walls and and just be aware of what are the potential hazards in my work area. And rock falls, fall of grounds, they're a major hazard underground. Um, so that's, I guess, yeah, kind of like the last message I wanted to pass on. Mm. Everyone has responsibilities, even the manufacturer. They've got to make sure they supply a product to their own specs. Um, but the ground support is there for a reason. It's not just to look pretty, it's there to keep us safe um, and you know maintain safe workplace for everyone. Yeah, and I think, I think it's good when you get to the stage at a site where if we're coming up saying, look, you can't put these fucking bolts in with a bloody small bit. Like it's just, it's like, it's difficult. And and if, you, if you're struggling with that and that's chewing up time, it means, love and care has been taken out of another piece of yeah. part of the process at some point. And That's it. If you can, everyone can sort of, you know, work work together and, you know, yeah, no, that makes sense. You could probably, we should be getting a bigger bit to put those things in and then everything yeah. is just easier and it flows and you're getting a better product, I think. And that's, you know, the biggest issue or one of the issues on mine sites is we work in silos, you know, there's a bit of us and them. Yeah. The operators think, oh, those bloody oxygen thieving squeezes up in the office don't come down the hole. <laughs> Bullshit enough. castle. <laughs> yeah. And we say, oh, the operators are doing a shit job, yeah. you know. Yeah. But we're all. Easy to fall into the trap, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we're all on the same team here. Like, we're all trying to get dirt out of the hole safely as possible. So. Just, all right. If everyone just takes on mine and Tommy's recommendations today, every mind thought it'd be just flying after this. Oh, yeah, there's been some great bloody tips, I think. I oh, appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. No, thanks very much for coming along, mate. Bloody sorry you bloody missed the barbie. Hopefully this keg's unfrozen or something. We can, <laughs> got, we've got three half beers over there you might be able to have. I no, really together. appreciate it. And, um, oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, grab bloody Tommy Parrot on LinkedIn, everyone. He'll be, he's, he's now the, uh, the WI's resident geotech, if he wasn't already. So <laughs> One one off, one off. Anyway. Yeah, no, I really appreciate it, mate. No, that was a good bloody yarn. Yeah, no, thanks for having us. What are we going to talk about next time? What's another bloody... Uh, oh, I've got a whole oh, book, mate. Gee, I? yeah, as, as I say, <laughs> I, won't have, I won't have to ask twice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Size, size missity would be a good one. Bloody talking about um lots of cool pictures to go along with that too. Yeah, yeah, and the yeah. the monitoring of it and how that's um yeah how that's done and what these bloody yeah you figure out the magnitude and some of the biggest ones you've seen. Oh mate, oh beautiful. Once, we'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it next few months. Just Tommy don't will. do it on Friday at lunchtime next yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> at least have the bloody piss pour them properly next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Ah, thanks very much, mate. Thanks, Legend. thanks for having us. Jeez.